Welcome back again. I'm Chris Richter. Great to have you here. We're going to look at what a couple of the important reports are that you should know how to find. You should know where they are and what they're all about when you are teaching in the Moodle LMS. There is lots of other reports too, but these are the ones that you will probably want to use or need to use most of the time now. First of all, I am using Moodle 4.0 for this. So the boost theme is what I'm using. So if it looks a bit different than your Moodle, then that's okay. But the reports will still be pretty much in the same location or very similar location and the reports will still look very similar. Before we go any further, uh, check out the courses that I have down below. There's a link in the description. There's some Moodle courses there, perfect for teachers especially, but also for people who are creating courses in Moodle. There's over seven hours worth of video training that you can use. Check it all out, it's fantastic. Uh, love to see you in the class as well. Going through some of those courses, you'll learn heaps out of it. Now back to what we're doing today is looking at the reports that a teacher would use, the most common typical reports. I have a course here. If we have a look at the course. It's a fairly straightforward. It just has lots and lots of different activities and lots of different content. There's a wiki in there, which has actually been done by this student. A collection of tasks and things that they have to do, a few assignments. Uh, some of those assignments are completed. There's a quiz, assignment one is completed. All of that's in there in this course. If we're looking at our participants, which is the next important thing, here is our list of participants and all their contact details. Well, actually, it's just their email address. But you can see that there, some of them are in groups, some of them are not in groups as well. So everybody's in there and they've all, all accessed the course at some stage. So that part's sort of covered. So the first report, and this isn't technically a report, but it is part of what you would do for reporting, is the grades area. And if you go to grades, you can actually go in and see what the grades are. So this will be in the grades section, which may be over on the left in your course, or it may be a button up the top you have to click on that then shows you grades. You can go in and look at this basic report that tells you what the grades are for a student. So in this case, our student completed quiz one. They didn't pass, but they did attempt it. Lesson one, they haven't passed, but they have attempted it with 75. They've completed assignment one, assignment two, and assignment three is all completed. They've also completed quiz two, and you can see this one here's completed uh, parts of assignment two. So there's a few different completions and a course total. So everything's in there in that grade book part, but we're looking at reports. So let's jump into the report section. If we go to reports, there's a competency breakdown, which we won't look at. The main one that you want to go to is activity completion and course completion. So they're two big ones and the activity report, which we'll have a quick look at as well. But let's look at activity completion. And this is talking about all the activities that are involved in this course and whether a student has completed that activity based on the completion criteria set for each activity. So in this case, our student, our first one, has completed a whole heap of things. Now, if you're wondering what the completion requirements are, all you need to do is hold the mouse over the tick box and it will tell you that student completed on this date and tells you what they completed. If we go over here, all the way to quiz one, you can see here, hold the mouse over, completed. So the student did complete it, but they did not achieve a pass grade. So the requirements for completing that quiz must have been that they had to submit the quiz, but not that they had to receive a pass grade to complete. So that depends on the criteria that you set for each activity. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, about that criteria, let me jump back in our course and I'll just go to that quiz, which I think was quiz two. Go into the settings for quiz two, and you'll see down here that we have activity completion, and the completion is that the student must view and they must receive a grade, but it doesn't say they have to actually pass. Because they didn't have to pass, this is still classed as being complete, even though they didn't have a pass grade. And the pass grade will be based on this grade just up here, which is a grade to pass. So just because they didn't receive that, uh, get the 10 as a pass grade, it doesn't really matter because our activity completion doesn't say that they have to pass. It just says they have to receive a grade. So that's why it looks that way. So if we jump back again, you can see here for our assignment, assignment one, they completed it. They achieved a pass grade. So that means they've completed this activity. For assignment two, they've completed this one. So you can go through and have a look at all the completions. You can download them as a CSV as well. 
Excel compatible CSV, which is really handy too. So that's the first report, which is the activity completion. Then we have the activity report. And the activity report just tells you about the activity, what the logs are for those activities. You may want to know how many people have viewed these, um, how often they viewed them, you know, that type of thing. So it gives you a little bit of a report, just a, a rough guide as to what's happening with each of the activities. So that's a useful little basic report. Then the other really important one that you will look at is the course completion. Course completion just tells you where a student sits in relation to the activities or tasks that are required to complete this particular course. And course completion report is only there if you have course completion turned on for the current course you're using. So I've got course completion on and I've assigned course completion to say that they need to complete quiz one and they need to complete assignment one. And if they've done both of those items, then the course is complete. Notice all those other activities aren't in there because my requirements for this course is only quiz one, assignment one to actually complete the course. So that means they don't have to have done any of the other activities, even though there's completion set for them, they don't have to have done them. This is the requirement for completing this course. Now, how did we find all of that? Let's jump back to our course again. In our course, we go to more and we go course completion and you'll see in course completion, it says here condition activity completion for activities. And if I scroll down all the way through quiz one and assignment one, the only two things selected and that matches this course completion report here that shows you what quiz one assignment one and the total course completion that they have for this course. So that's the most important reports beside the grade book. That's the other couple of reports that are really, really important and worth having a look at and making sure you know where they are and where to find them. So you go into your course, you go into reports and then choose either course completion, uh, activity completion or the activity report if you just like to know the number of people that have accessed the activities. Hope that's been useful to you. Let me know if there's other topics you'd like to learn about as well. I'm Chris Richter. I'll talk to you again very soon. Don't forget, check out the courses in the description. Uh, ricochet.com.au or courses.ricochet.com.au. Uh, great for teachers, great for course creators as well. I'll talk to you again soon.